Welcome to the High Performance CEO Show, your exclusive insight into the strategies and success habits of the world's top CEOs. I'm your host, Sebastian Schieke, entrepreneur, mentor, and business angel. Prepare to grow your business, enhance your leadership skills, and thrive in today's world. Let's dive in. Welcome to another episode of the High Performance CEO Show. Today I'm talking to Vasu Mitra, also called Vasu Kerli. And Vasu is an amazing person. He's the founder of PickTime, one of the top leading appointment scheduling platforms, one of the top 10 actually. He's also listed with a startup of the top 100 startups of the year in the US for the year 2019. PickTime has currently 5 million users across about 120 countries. And the interesting thing is PickTime has achieved this success, this remarkable success, without spending a dime on marketing. I mean, get this, without spending a dime on marketing. Azumi is a successful entrepreneur, and I'm really looking forward to talk with him today about uh, his story. He's from India, growing this amazing company. And also how he managed to get all this exposure without spending money on marketing. And also about big time, you know, about the story, about this amazing company and uh, his plans for the future. Vazu, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sebastian. That's a great intro. And thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, it's been a, it's a pleasure. I mean, it took us a while to schedule an appointment. You're traveling between India and the US. And... Uh, you know, obviously very busy. Yeah, I mean, on the way to maybe the next unicorn, who knows, yeah, challenging the other um, appointment scheduling applications um, companies. So maybe let's start with your story. You know, let's start with uh, how did you end up being uh, su such a successful entrepreneur managing a company across uh, yeah, two continents, basically? Yes, uh, maybe I should start from my young age when I was in grade five. So in early 90s, I was so fascinated about computers. I think that's when the com personal computers were introduced in India. Actually, I was born in, the, in India. So I was raised in India. The so personal computers were just introduced in India and then I had access to it. So I used to see, well, why, why is this thing working, first of all? Now, why is it uh, <laughs> now, why is it showing something when I type here and it's coming there? Like, how, how is it all thing is happening? And I used to rip them apart. Uh, like a toy and then reassemble them, like dismantle everything. And then maybe take two computers and put that in this, this and that, like is to play around. Um, so that, yeah. that, that actually instilled a, a sense of curiosity. So I need to learn this, like um, what's happening. Like, uh, so I think uh, in nineties, in early nineties, we used to have these programming languages for kids. I think it's called Logo and there's another one called Basic, which is called Beginner's mm -hmm. Symbolic Instruction Code. I mastered basic, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, ma I remember. I remember basic. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it, it's as good as C language actually back then. So, uh, I used to play around. Uh, and, um, I actually mastered that language back then. I used to write all these primary numbers and finding out what a primary number is and all that in, in early nineties. Uh -huh. The black and white screens. So I started creating all these programs. So I, this I, this passion actually not only laid foundation for my current uh, career, what whatever I'm having, uh, it actually. Uh, I still have this uh, continuous learning curve, like I do, because technology is so fast changing thing. So we need to keep updating ourselves every now and then. So yeah, I find, uh, finally I ended up in computer science and engineering, which was which I always wanted to. Uh -huh. And uh, right after my graduation, I went to become a software developer. And then after a couple of years, I understood everything in and out, what to do in software development. And I started my own software consulting firm. So I used to help companies, especially startups, who do not have the facility to have a high developer and create products. So I used to help all the startups who wants to bring their ideas into reality. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's how I ended up becoming, becoming an entrepreneur by software consulting. And then in the later stages, like I said, again, uh, this uh, software consulting uh, uh, for startups actually, actually in a way, actually I, uh, dealt with a lot of uh, innovative to creative people, creative teams that actually ended up seeing what exactly is happening. These guys uh, 
are creating a product it's nice building ideas it's all, it's all great but i see there are they used to juggle between different tools different things to and run and they used to run their operations yeah. very uh, not efficiently and manage their manage their time inefficiently and all. so that's when an idea sparked so that's when i co-founded big time a scheduling platform it's just uh, it's it's beyond scheduling it's not just a, i wanted to build a scheduling platform so i ended up building a scheduling platform with the tons of other features now loaded uh, along with it so i envisioned this tool which i wanted to build with appointments and a lot of other tools uh, which want which i wanted to make it beyond scheduling just not scheduling so mm-hmm. a small business owner with a team of 5 to 20 can run the entire business smoothly and seamlessly with one tool i don't want them to juggle between different tools so we started with a scheduling platform and then we started adding invoicing sales reporting all other cool tools so that the business owner can just stay on one platform and more uh, most importantly which is most affordable big time is very affordable to use as well we do not charge much and actually uh, big time we ran big time for free for almost 3 4 years recently oh, yeah oh. a year back or uh, an in indi- you know, I mean, after covid we started charging big time yeah. uh-huh. you touched on a very interesting topic i mean i also have a it background software background i also had a software consulting company back in 20 25 years so i have the same it literacy and you touched on a topic of say okay we have too many tools you know uh, and and it's just as wide i mean both of us we know how to connect them you know um, but uh, honestly i mean i spent a lot of time and effort in really making this work you know you have this tool then you have a interface talk to that tool and uh, and then it goes back and forth and it's doable for us you know because we, we know the background we know um, how these systems work but for many people it's a big challenge you know it's a big challenge implementing a sap here you know it's connecting uh, two systems and uh, and if something breaks then uh, you never really know where to look you know you really have to go through the whole process and see okay where's the pitfall and having an uh, a vision to put all this into a into a streamlined application is, uh, I think it's very clever and solves uh, quite a significant problem which we have in the market. Not to speak about uh, all the money we spend on all these subscriptions. Exactly. Know? I mean, I go on a monthly, um, maybe on a two or three monthly basis, I, I go through my subscriptions. Yeah, okay, do I need this? You know, <laughs> is this still relevant? And, and then you cut these expenses out because, I mean, it's accumulating, of course. No? I mean, there are $50 here, $100 there, but this really can add up. And if this can be done into one single product, especially for smaller organizations who are perfectly uh, equipped for these features, it's a great move. So you started offering this for free for a while. Yes. Yeah? How did you fund this? I mean, yeah, we all know the freemium model, but at some point, people need to, or companies need to make money, you know, so, to be able to sustain and pay their staff. Yes. <laughs> so we started big time just a couple of years, uh, I think a year or two before before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. we wanted to run it for free for a while and see the adoption. Uh, like you said, big time was built without spending a dime on marketing. And that's true. Yeah, we did not spend dime on marketing so far. So uh, we wanted to build it organically. Um uh, we wanted to have adoption. So we kept the product for free for an year. We wanted to see the adoption. Mm-hmm. We wanted to have the customer intelligence analytics, like take feedback from customers and build them exactly what they want instead of we building something and giving them that this is what the product is. Instead, we build uh, a prototype and give it to the customers and then take feedback from customers and see well, what do you want in this? Like, they say the mm-hmm. product is... And if you have something like a tool like this or an integration like this or an app like this, which can be integrated, that is great. Then we just take a couple of weeks and then build it back again and give it to the customers and they're happy. So we kept doing this process again and again and again and again, I think for a year or two. And then a pandemic hit. So we saw there are a lot of NGOs, a lot of clinics. They started even schools and small schools and some universities around the world. Because they cannot run offline, they had to move online. They wanted yeah. to have a tool like Big Time, but where we do not offer video meetings in Big Time. So immediately we saw there was a challenge there again. We started building. Uh, we know that there is nothing offline anymore. Uh, people don't meet. Yeah. <laughs> there are no services <laughs> offered online. Uh, offline. So we had to move online. So we mm-hmm. were one of the very first partners for Zoom mm-hmm. and uh, partners for Google Meet. You know, so we integrated with them and then. Whenever you, I think uh, 
We were one of the first 10 products or integrations with Zoom. I just wanted to ask, uh, you didn't rebuild uh, a video conferencing system, you in credit Yes, existing exactly. One. We do not want people to, we don't force them to uh, use our product. We say, okay, you're already comfortable yeah. using a product. Okay, let's integrate the product mm -hmm. into our system. So you can just uh, keep using your Zoom and we work in the background. So all the students mm -hmm. started booking appointments through a big time with the teachers and we automatically create a Zoom uh, a video meeting link or a Google Meet or a Skype yeah. or a Microsoft Teams. So we integrated with most of mm -hmm. the video meeting platforms out there. E even we integrated with an open source platform, Jitsi, it's called Jitsi Meet. Uh, mm -hmm. So people can take video calls or classes online. Apart from that, e even in the pandemic uh, times, there are a lot of pharmacies, a lot of diagnostic centers, um, even you know, vaccinations after that. So they started using COVID for COVID vaccinations to book an appointment for COVID vaccinations and book an appointment for COVID testing and all that. So we kept it for free for a while because we, we saw, we wanted to have a good night's sleep and we saw that it's an unfortunate thing which happened and we wanted to be part yeah, of it and uh, support as much as we can. And uh, helping the community, yeah. Kept it free for a while. And then the moment the pandemic uh, uh, reached an end and then we go to a pricing plan and now we are good. Yeah. Amazing story. So um, you also had a phase where you're looking for funding, basically. Yeah? Yes. Um, venture capital. I mean, at the moment, there are many companies in urge need of investments, of cash. What can you give them as a advice? What did work in your opinion? I mean, I'm also a business angel and investor, so I get tons of uh, pitch decks almost every week and I can't, I can't look at that. Yes. You know? I mean, it's just uh, <laughs> too much. So how can you stand out as an organization? So what we did with Big Time is, uh, I've seen a lot of startups without bringing the prototype, some of the startups start pitching. And I've seen mm -hmm. uh, non, uh, other startups, even non-working prototypes, they start pitching. So what my advice is maybe build a product, have a working prototype, uh, reach out to customers, and then let the customers use it for a while, and then test it out mm -hmm. with customers, and then rebuild it according to their needs, what they need exactly. And now we see a working uh, prototype and which is ready to go to the market. I think that's when maybe if you do not have any funds or if you bootstrap by yourself, all by yourself. And then my advice may be if, uh, if you're trying to uh, reach uh, investors, if if reaching investors is become getting difficult, then maybe you need to work with an accelerator, uh, join an accelerator. They help you uh, get into a network where you can pitch to a lot of investors. And yeah, I mean, you keep this process repeating, prototype, uh, give it to your customers and then rebuild it, like this agile uh, thing, you keep doing it yeah. and then uh, you build your customer base along with that organically try to build your market and then again, keep pitching, uh, make your pitch, make sure your pitch deck is not big, <laughs> make it uh, get to the point, make it simple so then the investors understand it very easily. I think maybe the SaaS, the, in SaaS, especially uh, the markets are really good because uh, should be in the software which can be used globally now uh, because nowadays everything is internet on internet and you can reach out to any customer any in any part of the world so build a SaaS product uh, which actually solves a real problem some for a customer somewhere and make sure your market is a decent size I think that 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 yeah. will automatically get you an investment otherwise you'll get you directly revenue building traction yeah having really customers who use the product is the best proof that the thing you're building provides value and is accepted by, by your user base. When you look back at the, uh, the time of running and building uh, pick time, what was the biggest challenge for you? Yeah, for us, like we bootstrap pick time, not a little support, a very good support from my family and friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and then we did uh, bootstrap by ourselves and then we like, we did run it for free for some time uh, while we are bootstrapping oh, mm -hmm. and then we had a working model uh, but there was no cash flow uh, that was very difficult oh. times where, where we were not able to even pay salaries for our employees we yeah. had a tough phase for a couple of months and then now um, yeah i mean that's that's the biggest challenge until we got our first funding uh, until we closed our first funding round it was very difficult the moment we closed our funding round we had a cash flow and then the business started doing good um like we helped the community in the pandemic and the community is helping back uh, by, by yeah. using the product. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the challenge we had. And we, we, uh, we never actually spent, like I said before, we never spent uh, time on marketing. 
uh, but we followed these uh, seven steps like how to get to that stage maybe i can tell you those steps like uh, you need to mm-hmm. uh, first you need to define your uh, target market the target audience yes. who you're trying to sell this all always very important very, that uh, we have a clear focus a clear niche and a. this is the biggest challenge many entrepreneurs have they think oh everyone could use what i do yeah. you know and uh, exactly <laughs> and then you, you you sell to no one yes they could realize we need to focus on a market which has to be a decent size yeah so if if you are trying to solve that problem growing global is a perfect solution and the building the stack online such is online now so that's the great yeah. thing so yeah first step is the build the target audience find put everything on the paper like a pen and put it on a paper and okay these are my audience these are my demographics and this is where i'm going to target and then maybe you need to work on your competitive analysis so now see mm-hmm. who, are, who are my competitors what are they uh, yeah. doing how big is the market are they really making money in this market or uh, is the market collapsing or uh, oh. uh, make sure like excuse me to interrupt this is a very good point yeah because if you look at the market if you look at uh, organizations companies competitors many of them if they are good at marketing they they show up very strong you know they saying hey you know we are the, we are the big boys and, and we really uh, kick ass but often it's not the case yeah but this showing off uh, really intimidates uh, the uh, competitors you know they think yeah you know why should i do this i mean there is company x was set and they are much big, bigger and better than me often it's not the case you know they they struggle to survive exactly they just that, have good marketing there's a lot of companies who does uh, really good marketing <laughs> then spend a lot yeah. of have high, very high budgets on marketing yeah um, this game the competition <laughs> yeah 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 uh, so yeah i mean so do the marketing strategy uh, competitive analysis and then now uh, um, make a really good website uh, first and mm-hmm. then have very nice landing pages have hundreds of them if possible for mm-hmm. the target customers whom ever you're focusing have great landing pages for each kind of uh, section of customers yeah. and put down lay down every uh, possible unique selling propositions of your product the how different is my product than the existing product or what are the value mm-hmm. adding so the added services we are providing through our product and put them in on your website and then like uh, branding and marketing start working on your brand make your brand look good like make sure it, it's not some another product another startup uh, which is coming out that make it look more uh, um, enterprise uh, green product make it so robust and make high quality product and make it look like that and of course the product should be like that <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah the most important thing is does it do what it says on a tin yeah <laughs> yeah and the most important thing is the um, the content uh, marketing now uh, oh. which is not very expensive uh, how yeah, yeah. uh, get some content writers on your team start yeah. building content uh, try to add as much as content on your website add some relevant content and then try to work with different social media or, or different bloggers get your content out there try to get some batch links and build your uh, website presence automatically actually it's a, it's a long process it's not a short process because it's a it's a free uh, way to do it it's yes <laughs> yes just wanted to to, to say that uh, for everyone who's listening i mean it's not like it's not an overnight success you know that oh yeah i, I write a blog post and then tomorrow uh, my uh, customer base is overflowing yes. no it, it's going to take a while like it's going to take at least 6 mm-hmm. months to 1 year i think that's the key people uh, do not wait they do not have that much of patience yeah. they try to spend money yeah. or uh, they see for a couple of months and say it's not working it, it is going to work if you do it in a consistent way so and then start working on your seo the uh, search engine optimization and then put the right uh, key and do your keyword analysis and all that and put all the keywords wherever it is possible in your website uh, and it has to be relevant again uh, so you need to have that smartness where to put it or where to put and where to make it uh, seamlessly integrated in your website and uh, finally like i said the customer intelligence analytics launch a product and then again the same repetitive task where you take ideas from your customers and then uh, you rebuild it try building it as fast as you can a week or a two in a week or two and then give it back to the customer if the customer is happy he gives you more ideas and gives you more feedback and then try to rebuild the product and that's that gives you success and that consistency puts you in the market and you, you'll be in somewhere in the top in the global market in a, in couple of years you have to wait for that yeah, yeah. 
Exactly, the couple of years. Okay, and then then um, you we start selling our product. We start getting our um, first users. Mm -hmm. And what comes then? I mean, I would say just to uh, not to put you on the spot, but uh, my 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 experience is I love customer. I love companies who do an amazing customer service. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, for me, this is one of the um, when I love a product, when I decide for something, do I stick with the product? I mean, yes, it needs to do the job, but also should provide amazing customer service. Yeah, it should really wow me in terms of responsiveness, and 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 I think this is also something where you where you really uh, thrive and and uh, provide an amazing amazing product and service. Otherwise, uh, you wouldn't have five million users. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, customer service. Uh, that's really we take customer service really seriously in peak time. We make sure our customers are answered in less than five ten minutes. Around the clock, we have teams working, supporting customers. If they have any issues, we answer them immediately. Can we, can we, sorry, can we repeat this? Five to ten minutes. I mean, competitors out there in the world, you know, get this message. Yeah, Five to ten minutes. I mean, sometimes I send a message to a company, I don't hear for them, from them for days, you know. Yeah, so we take that yeah. very seriously. And then actually that, yeah. that, that, uh, that's one of the key areas how we retain our customers, like we help them immediately. Mm -hmm. And if, if we get a feedback, we take that again seriously. And again, uh, try to give the custom, customer back as much as we can. Yeah, I and mean, um, that's how we do it in this um, product. If you look ahead in the future, what's your your big master plan for the next five years? I mean, if we say we can have plans for five years, but Say maybe three years. So we have, we have our vision. Our vision is to empower businesses by enhancing their productivity and simplifying scheduling. Uh, it's just, like I said, we are, we are just not a scheduling company. Now we are a business solution where we started with scheduling because that's the very first thing every business wants. And then we started, build, we wanted to, we already have some tools around scheduling where business can run their whole business. Now we wanted to add more and more tools and have more and more strong reporting and in the in the future, uh, as in the AI revolution, we wanted to be a part of it, and we wanted to integrate AI as much as you can, so that customers can just chat and then schedule a meeting uh, with the payment, doing a lot of things, or just send a message, and then meetings are automatically scheduled, something like that. So we were working on different ideas, brainstorming in the teams. That's uh, the goal we are thinking of. So by end of the day, we wanted to empower businesses and. Uh, make them more productivity which uh, gives us a good night's sleep it gives you a good night's sleep and also your your customers a good night exactly. sleep. Of course, yeah? <laughs> great hey vaso i mean there's so much knowledge i love these seven steps uh, you touched on and is there anything else you would like to share with the audience i mean we have ceos executives uh, entrepreneurs watching this these episodes and what is your maybe your biggest maybe it's a big question but your biggest learning as an entrepreneur if you uh, yes uh, i would like to add maybe my biggest learning as an entrepreneur initially when I built the product we did not have any vision like we just wanted to build a oh, yeah. SaaS product put it out there let customers yeah. use it that's our initial idea the, and just solve customer needs and then just a solve a solution uh, later what I understood is we need to have a clear vision without clear vision what you wanted to do you cannot sustain longer if you want to sustain yeah. for decades you have to have a clear vision and then yeah. have this uh, goal setting um, we call it smart. Smart course, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> be specific what you're doing and whatever you're doing has to be measurable. And then it has to be achievable at the same time. And then realistic, but realistic and relevant at the same oh, time. I mean, I also teach smart goals in my workshops. I sometimes say it should also be a bit risky, you know, because we want to grow. We want to stretch ourselves, you know, we want to expand you know and then taking on risky goes makes at least our comfort zone it has to be it should have a certain time bound <laughs> so yeah we follow yeah. the same uh, whatever you teach <laughs> we follow the same yeah. smart goals yeah we have a clear vision and have a smart goal and then i think uh, yeah. that's what get to the near future and have a uh, long-lasting uh, a sustainable product. Wow, so thank you so much for your time. And you are in India right now. What time is it in India? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, night two o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's night two o'clock. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, if I would have known, I would have <laughs> no problem. No problem. Sure. But even I didn't expect that I'll be in India at this moment. I thought I'd be in the US, but I had some change of plans. <laughs> so thank you so much for spending your night with us. It was a very remarkable episode. Shared lots of good advice. I wish you all the best for your 
journey with uh, peak time and uh, your personal journey as a founder. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you very much, Sebastian. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you for tuning into the High Performance CEO Show. I'm your host, Sebastian Schieke, and it's been a pleasure serving you. Please subscribe to our show on your favorite platform and leave us a review. Your support helps us reach more listeners and create a bigger impact. Check out our website, sebastianschieke.com, for additional resources. Until next time, be bold, be exceptional, be outstanding, be a leader. <music>